Welcome to Beer Barbecue Baseball. I've got Matt here with me again. And uh, we're going to have the Goose Island uh, Belgian Style Pale Ale 2016. It's the Matilda. So, our good friend Eric gave us this. So, thank you, Eric. We're going to give it a try tonight. So that's the old style Goose Island, right? The old style tab. I don't think they have the caps like that anymore, do they? I don't think so. So, so 2016, when did uh, AB InBev buy them? This might be prior. Mm, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh. Oh, it's ready for an explosion. Oh, there you go. Everything else we've opened tonight has exploded. I see some water vapors, otherwise known as smoke, coming out of the bottle. Oh. I'll let you pour. All right. Smells definitely citrus, lemony, which is very pleasant to me. This will be my first Matilda, so. Mine as well, so. 2016. What did it say, a pale Belgian? So there's yeah, a uh, Belgian pale ale. There's a lot of variety. I'm so, getting a farmhouse smell, which makes sense, because it's got, and I'm gonna butcher the name of this yeast, but it's got the Bretonomyces. Uh, matured with that yeast, which is one of those wild strains you see in a farmhouse sometimes. This one smells real good. Did you try it yet? No, I didn't. We got a lot of carbonation still coming up. It's a good color. I never would have guessed that this was a Pale ale, though, even no, it says Belgian style pale ale. Nice color, leaves some good lacing. Kind of finishes fruity. You get that Belgian up front, that Belgian yeah. style. And yeah, then it leaves with a little fruit in your mouth. You get it real rough up front. It's almost like a reverse aftertaste. You got yeah. But then it finishes fruity, and then that, that other taste comes back. I almost was going to compare it to a cider, but it's not as sweet. It's not appley. It's just that that real smooth fruit taste. Yeah, it's definitely delicious. Kind of dry. I'm getting more real, real dry. Yeah, I get more. That one was dry, not as much fruit, but the. Mm -hmm. It's starting to build on me. Drying out more, I'm getting less of the sweet. I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like a, the smell of leathery, but in a taste form. Yeah, you're right. Now you say that. My, my sweet's going away. This is starting to turn into... It looks like my whole mouth's dry now. My tongue, my gums, the roof of my mouth. You see that's like an apricot color or yeah that's a nice color uh. all right i know these 
are highly touted and I don't have anything to compare it to. It is a unique, unique flavor. It's like overwhelmingly dry. The more I'm drinking, it's building. If we didn't say already, it's 7% alcohol by volume. Did we say that already? Nope. Develops in the bottle over five years. Yeah, so we're drinking this one. Oh. Just about three. <clears throat> so. the, yeah, bottled on December 20th, 2016. So, again, Goose Island, Matilda, 2016. So if anybody's going to comment that I've had these, I'd like to know if anybody's done a same year tasting aged differently. Some of them hit a two, three year and, and they hit their max and their peaks. Some of them continue to change as they age every year. If you have any experience with that on this one, I'd love to see it in the comments. Yeah, that fruit is just completely gone. Yep. I keep pushing it away and letting it sit and see when it's coming back, but the dryness is just built up so much. It's almost like eating peanuts. You know, you eat peanuts and you get a really dry mouth. That's what it reminds me of. So. Yeah, it went from being a sweet citrus, dried apricot to now I'm tasting a, it's like a fruit was smoked for 12 hours. The smoky flavor is all that's left, none of the sweet. I'm trying to come up with the words that almost a little excuse me almost a little banana in there but yeah. like a different tasting banana that makes sense I don't know if my palate's good enough to pick everything up in this so definitely complexity wise this one's off the chart yeah it's changed from drink to drink it's continued to build on your palate and the smell is different than the taste, so there's a lot going on here. Definitely not something I'd, you know, polish off a six pack by the pool. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think one's probably good enough for you know a while. I'm just, it's, it is very. It is very complex, that's for sure. I'm getting banana more and more though. And you've, you've had more than me. It keeps changing the more I drink. I wonder if mine's gonna turn into banana here. As far as taste, yeah. what would you score? I, I mean, it, it's, what does it say? Belgian style pale ale. Okay, I don't, I'm not going to compare it to any other Belgians or pale ales I've had. Right. It's its own animal. I, would not be something I would seek out. I'll be very honest there, but I don't think you're supposed to. I think it's just you're supposed to admire the complexity of this one. Yeah, good point. What about you? It, it doesn't, like you say, you can't compare it to anything. I mean, when I drink this, I don't think of a pale ale whatsoever. I don't think of a Belgian either. It's like a, I get, uh, it reminds me more of a Belgian style beer than a pale ale. I don't get a whole lot of pale ale on it, but maybe that's, that's why it's drying so much now because it's more of the pale ale characteristics coming out in it. But yeah. I mean, again, I wouldn't seek this out again either. I would, I mean, it's kind of like the, um, the Bourbon County, you know, you get one and you stick it in the back of the fridge and forget about it. But 
I'm going to go with a three and a half. Yeah. It's, it, it may be too complex for me. I mean, really. I think I would, if I'm going to do this, I would maybe get a few different years or get a few bottles of the same year, age them differently. I'd like to sit down and compare it to itself, maybe. Yeah. And, and split this with a few other guys and see if we can get the words to describe it. I think having a small little snifter of this would be enough for me. But then again, the more we drink it, the more it changes. So maybe we're doing a disservice. You drink the whole thing yourself. It's hitting me, I think. I don't know if those were the home brews that we had earlier, but... Oh, it's hitting you. Yes. Uh, really? Yes. So... Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. It's only a seven. Now, I expected... I had not known what I mean, what only a was. seven. Seven is pretty high. I've had the wild yeast strains that smell like just rancid horse blanket and then taste like lemonade. And those are an obvious... You know, I revel in their complexity because it's so obvious. And that's what I expected this to be. But this one's just, it's changing on me and I don't have words for it. Yeah. And I keep drinking it because I'm curious what it's going to do next. But then again, I, I wouldn't pop one open again tomorrow. <laughs> but next year when this rolls around again, if we get our hands on one, I'm going to be excited to have it. So. Right. Absolutely. So, there you have it. Um... Goose Island Matilda, 7%. This is 2016. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any better description than we do, please drop that in the comments and let us know. Thanks for watching.